Oh, there he is. Take yep. it away, sir. I decided to dress up. My video is not upside down. I'll have to figure out Michael's secret there. Uh, we all have lots of secrets to learn from Michael as usual. So um, thank you for having me. Thank you for everyone joining. I think I saw in our uh, background chat that we've had over 600 concurrent users most of the day. So that's uh, really awesome. So thank you for everybody. Um, you know, it, it's uh, exciting being part of Microsoft now and seeing the enthusiasm, you know, as an MVP, I always was part of that enthusiasm and maybe I stoked the fires a lot. Uh, but now as being part of the engineering and seeing folks using our stuff and getting real world stuff done, that's even cooler to me. So um, for those of you that don't know, I joined Microsoft about three months ago. I'm now part of the MEM engineering group um, and I work on customer issues really. So somewhat similar to what I did before, but my focus is really about figuring out what's stopping customers from being successful with our products and going and figuring out how we can change that so the customers can be successful. Right. We all know that not everything's perfect. Code is code. Anyone who's written a two line script knows that there's always going to be some type of issue with even that two line script. Um, and every customer is different. And so that's what we really need to figure out. Right. Uh, it's one of the reasons that Intune has really taken off is because we focus on it. We've gone and asked customers. We work with customers constantly to figure out why things aren't working for them. Right. Sometimes that means going to Apple, Google. Sometimes it going, means going to our own product teams um, and figuring out exactly what that is. Um, and that's exactly what I'm focused on doing. So um, that's a little bit about me and where I am and, and um, how um, I've gotten to where I am. So let me go ahead and start my slide deck so you guys can see the title here real quick. Let me make sure I pick the right screen. No idea which screen this is right now. Screen two, there we go. Okay. So I will not switch to presenter mode. I will just leave it in this mode and do this just so it's a little bit easier for me to navigate around here. Uh, the topic today mainly, hopefully everyone saw this in the agenda, is co-management uh, and uh, tenant attach. So as the title here kind of alludes to, uh, cloud ain't the enemy of on-prem, right? For so long, we heard this a long time ago. Most people remember Steve Ballmer getting up and uh, in an hour session said cloud maybe who knows right a thousand times and people were counting and, and having games around that uh, probably not the best thing to do but um, at the time everyone thought he was totally off his rocker um, and, and maybe he was to a certain extent but maybe not for this reason uh, cloud has clearly become super important today as well right uh, one of the things that we've seen uh, I'll skip past the agenda there real quick uh, and I'll put up the wonderful pigs fly. One of the things we've seen in the past three months, and we've heard this theme over and over and over again from a lot of customers, uh, they gave us this message loud and clear, we will never ever do cloud. Uh, for whatever reason, right? There were regulatory reasons, there were so-called technical reasons, um, and we've heard this message loud and clear over the past three months. Yeah, remember we told you we're never gonna do cloud? Yeah, it's really important for us now. Or some of them are like, yeah, maybe we need to rethink that sense. Um, and so that's really where this pig's fly is, is all about because you know the world's changed. We all know that the world's changed significantly. Uh, it's not how it was just a year ago. And so folks need to reconsider this. The other kind of interesting piece, and, and this is something that I kind of uh, ponder on a lot in my spare time, um, I guess I'm, I'm kind of boring that way, but is how would we have handled this scenario 10 years ago, right? I think, I don't know what would have happened. I think the world would have just crumbled, right? Because no one would have been working from home. We, you know, people were kind of VPNing in, there were some VPN technologies out there, but we couldn't manage devices. We couldn't do anything. Uh, and of course, nobody had mobile phones. There's lots of different things that are completely outside the scope that I don't know how the world would have survived. But if you went back 10 years ago, if you, you know, took a time machine, whatever, uh, could talk to yourself 10 years ago, and you knew that this was coming, exactly what you wanted to have designed to handle this scenario is kind of where we're at. Uh, no one had a crystal ball. Uh, I don't think anyone had any clue that something like this to so this magnitude was coming. Uh, but where we're at today is the cloud, right? The cloud enabled us to push through these last three months. Whether you've used Microsoft technologies, whether you've used Google technologies, you know, people have used Zoom pretty much ubiquitously now. All of these different uh, technologies are cloud based, right? Cloud in this sense, really, and, and in all senses, it's just a big data center that everyone can get to across the internet, right? Uh, but without the cloud, uh, you know, the last three months, I don't know where we, we would have been. So 
Uh, that brings us to Config Manager specifically, right, for all the folks that are out there. Uh, I definitely want to call out the bottom half of this slide. Um, I actually, I saw a thread this morning, which was really um, kind of serendipitous. Um, I, serendipity has been really an interesting thing over the past few months. I've seen the same comments in all kinds of different places. Like the same comment will come in from different sources within a day of each other. It's really kind of interesting. And so this popped up today in a thread, which was basically, hey, Config Manager's dead. Where are we going? Well, clearly anyone who's been uh, attended any any sessions from any Microsoft person, all the way from Satya to Brad, who's you know who was up next, to, to DJAM, who's up next as well, um, to all of us in the MVP community, and now those uh, folks in engineering, uh, config manager is not going anywhere. We have no plans of of removing that from your environment. We know how critical and how key it is to people's environments, um, and it, it's not going anywhere. What we're doing is we're continuing to iterate value. We know that where we're at today is great. Most people are in general pretty happy with what we have and what we've provided for them. But now we need to start doing newer things and the cloud opens that door, right? We can all of a sudden do all these additional cool new things when we attach Config Manager to the cloud. Um, so that's really what it's about, right? We wanna add value. Now, the other key piece on here is if you're still in that boat, you're a nuclear power plant, you're a, a submarine, I don't know, right? I don't know if you have, if folks have submarines out there, some type of isolated environment that for whatever strict reason, security, regulatory, right, can attach to the cloud, that's fine, right? As Microsoft, we wanna make a product for you that works for you, but we're not gonna make you move, right? If, if you're where you, if where you're at is happy and, and suits your purposes, great. We're happy for you, right? We can continue improving there as well. Uh, we're not gonna force you to go, but if you can, we'd really encourage you to go this way because it does open so many different doors. So that really brings us to both of these, right? The cloud attached and the co-management. And that's exactly what we're talking about. You can kind of see in the slide, it's got a nice little picture there in the bottom, which is really, really generic, uh, but it's about managing those devices, right? In various different ways, enabling that additional capability. We all know that things from you know, Intune doesn't exactly overlap with Config Manager, right? But what if we can put those together? And that's what some of this is, right? Is being able to do both of those things at the same time. Now, another key piece in here, and we hear this is a clearly a common theme over the past few months as well, is, hey, I need to manage my systems remotely, right? Uh, it's amazing how many organizations had no remote management capabilities, none whatsoever, no VPN, no, no nothing, right? No remote control, no nothing like Bombgar, no nothing, right? They sent all their users home uh, like everyone else did in general, uh, but they had no way of doing anything for or for those users or to the systems that they sent them home with. Um, that's a recurring thing. So one of the things that's come up a lot is, hey, we need to manage these devices that are remote. We want to do co-management. That's not the right answer here. Uh, co-management can help you in that scenario, but for that, and Aaron talked about this earlier, so I'm not gonna go into it a ton, and I don't think he talked about it a ton either, but hopefully this is something that everyone's familiar with. That's where the cloud management gateway is for if you're sitting on Config Manager today, right? Adding co-management to the mix isn't really about extending your Config Manager management to the cloud or to those internet connected devices. It's about adding cloud value to those devices. And, and there's clearly some overlap, right? So if we drew out a Venn diagram here, there would be a little bit of overlap for that, but it's not really where you want to be. The first step, if that's truly your base requirement, is to go pursue the, pursue the cloud management gateway. Having said that, that cloud management gateway is, of course, complementary to co-management, right? Because our devices and the whole scenario here, particularly, you know, I'll say it again, and I think everyone's probably heard it a lot over the past few months. The whole scenario here is that we need to be able to manage those devices remotely. So CMG is definitely the place to start. So once again, all about value. Where do we get that value from? And that's what these two pieces are all about. So the first one is co-management. So I put it in the title here specifically because there's a lot of confusion over what co-management is and what tenant attach is. Uh, they both kind of sound like they're attaching to the cloud and what's the difference between? So they both are attaching to the cloud. So that's really key here. We can get lost in kind of the, the verbiage here, right? Because we hear attach in so many different ways. But we'll, we'll focus on co-management here first. And, and what's here in the title is that it's the, attaching the clients. We're not attaching Config Manager in any way to the cloud. We're attaching the clients themselves to Config Manager, or to Intune, sorry, and, and really to the bigger MEM. So if you remember back going to Ignite, uh, we announced MEM, right? The whole system center suite um, has kind of departed or, or, or 
moved away from Config Manager, really the reverse. Config Manager has moved away from the System Center suite. And we created this new suite, MEM, right? Microsoft Endpoint Manager. And we moved Config Manager into it. We moved Intune into it, Autopilot and Desktop Analytics as well. And so this is starting to be some of that convergence as well, right? We're, we're wanting to make sure that all of these products integrate with each other and they take advantage of each other as well. Um, so here, what's on here is, um, I thought, oh, you know what? And okay, sorry, I confused myself because it was actually some arrows building on here. So I slightly confused myself. But basically what the arrows would have built on here is your first step is attaching your Active Directory right over here to your Azure Active Directory. If you haven't done that, that's the basic first step to starting getting cloud value. Why? Because everything we do is built on identity. Microsoft's core security tenant is about the user's identity and the device's identity at the end of the day. So when you move out to the internet, how do you have identity? Well, you're on-prem domain controllers. You've almost certainly not exposed to the internet. So how do they get identity? Maybe they VPN in, but now you're not really on the internet anymore necessarily. So what about all those other devices, right? All those workers that we just sent home, all those folks that are working from BYOD devices, all those folks that are working from temporary devices, right? Over the last three months, we've heard that as a recurring story is, hey, we don't even have devices to send home with our users. Go to Best Buy and buy a bunch and send them home with the users. So how do we control security in those scenarios when we don't explicitly have control over those devices? It's all about identity. So that's the first step here. Attach AD to Azure AD. This is basically free. We're not charging anyone for this, right? You just need an Azure subscription. You set up your Azure AD tenant, set up Azure AD Connect. Uh, it sounds like a handful of steps there, and it is, but it's nothing overly difficult. And now we get your identity synced between your on-prem AD and your Azure AD. And now we've enabled these scenarios and a whole bunch more. So step two is now exactly what this slide is about, which is the client attach, right? As noted before, or like I said before, Intune does some things that Config Manager doesn't do so well or doesn't do at all. And I'll point a few of these out in a, in a minute here as well when we hop into the demo. And then of course, vice versa, Config Manager, because of its long history, right? We have 25 years of history of Config Manager managing Windows. It does a whole host of things that Intune doesn't do and may never do, right? Our intention is not to replace Config Manager with Intune. Our intention is to provide a different way of managing your Windows devices that may or may not be suitable for your organization. But at the same time, that doesn't mean that both don't work better together. And that's really the, the scenario here, right? Is we want them both to, to give you value and to continue iterating on that value. So basically we're just attaching your devices down here wherever they may be, right? We generally want to have and this arrow right here, right, that goes between your site uh, and your devices, we want that to be connected using CMG, right, so that you have that continuous management no matter where the systems are at. Um, and then we connect it to Intune as well, so we get that value. So let's actually hop into the demo here. Let's see if I have to log in again. Yes, I do. I got my password right. Um, so this was always noted as being something very easy to do. In general, it is. Conceptually, there's a lot of hurdles to overcome, particularly if you have firewalls uh, and you have proxies, right? Just the normal things that we normally have to go through in, a, in an enterprise environment. But as far as Config Manager goes, it really is going through this one single wizard here, um, right? I can't go through the wizard again because I already have it configured in this tenant. But if we open the properties for this, and I'll use Zoom in as, here, as well here in a minute, not sure how many people need that in a remote world. Uh, but I will do it. So these same tabs will actually come up when you run through the wizard. There's really not much to it. You clearly need, right? We clearly need this, right? We need an Azure tenant. You got to have this stood up. So that's why that's always step one. We want to make sure that we have Azure and Azure AD stood up and that you have a valid subscription, however you purchase that subscription. So that's great. So I'm going to skip this tab because this tab is actually specific to tenant attached. So we won't actually talk about that one right now. Next. Really, we, what we can do is we can say, hey, I want to do all, and it helps if I hold down the control key. I want to do all, or I maybe just want to do pilot systems. So this is another kind of core tenet of what we're doing here as well. We don't want to force you to go all in, right? Not every organization wants to go all in, or does it even make sense for them to go all in? Plus, of course, there's some scariness here, right, for organizations who haven't done anything in the cloud before, or all of a sudden, right, if you have six figures numbers of devices, even if you only have 100 devices, still putting them all into something relatively new like this is scary, and rightly so. So that's why we have the ability to specify just a subset of your systems. 
Um, so I can change it, right? I can say none, I can say pilot, or I can say all. And clearly I have pilot here in my lab and I chose a collection. Pretty basic stuff, right? If you're familiar with config manager. Next, we have these workload sliders. I won't go into explicit details right now. We'll, we'll talk about those in a little bit more detail in a minute. Uh, but basically, when we talk about having two management systems managing the same device, right? This is exactly what co-management is here, right? We've attached our config manager managed devices to Intune. There is overlap, yes. Once again, you know, config manager does things that Intune doesn't do and vice versa, but there's clearly overlap here. And we always have had this issue, you know, in various methods or various forms, even with group policy. If there's two things trying to set the exact same registry value, the exact same setting, regardless of where that setting lives, who wins? How do we resolve the conflict? That question sometimes is a coin flip, right? Because it may be something that we never explicitly designed or tested. So how do you control that? Well, that's the explicit purpose of these sliders. We wanna make sure that we avoid conflicts because we don't wanna get into that scenario where it, it may be like, well, it's supposed to win in this case, but then there's all these weird caveats where it may not win, right? And, and there's other places that we actually have that continuing to happen, unfortunately. But this is one thing we did. We wanted to avoid that when it came to Intune and Config Manager. We wanted it to be um, very deterministic. We wanted you to know exactly which one was going to be applying those settings. And so that's what these sliders are, right? We have a middle ground, once again, pilot. We don't want to necessarily force you to do everything everywhere right off the bat if you're not comfortable, or maybe you're never going to want to do everything that way. You know, it, it's totally up to you based upon your requirements, where you're going as an organization, uh, and what you think is best. We're not going to force any of this down your throat. Uh, in a way, pilot here may not even be the best word, right? We, we may need to come up with a better word here and replace this uh, because you may be in pilot mode forever. If you're in pilot mode forever, is it really a pilot anymore? No, not really. And pilot gives the implication that we're forcing you off of that. We're not in any way. So you can kind of see the sliders. Most of the sliders are for the most part self-explanatory, but I'll talk a little bit more about those in a second here as well. And last, and this is relatively new if you have an older version of Config Manager, first upgrade, right? If you're not upgrading Config Manager on a relatively frequent basis, um, I won't explicitly say you're doing it wrong, but I will imply that you're doing it wrong at the very least. So, so for each of those sliders, we can also set a separate collection, right? So if you have different requirements for different subsets of your systems, we can come in here now. In my environment, I haven't even set anything over to pilot yet. So I, all of this is grayed out, but I can go fast in some areas, go slow in other areas, or choose not to go at all in other areas, right? Totally up to you, completely under your control to be able to do these kinds of things. Okay, so let's hop over to, and I thought I had done this, but I, oh yeah, I did. So if I hop over to my Azure portal, here we go. Uh, and I go to my all devices. Um, that's not my all devices. Oh, that's portal, sorry, confusing myself. So this is, I wanna go to the endpoint portal, which has clearly been logged out. So let me start a whole new place. So if we want to go to anything in the mem console, right? So if we go back to our unification, uh, part of this is having a unified enterprise admin experience as well. And so we've moved everything under endpoint.microsoft.com. So that's why I, where I'll navigate to here right now. And this is going to be focused specifically on endpoint, uh, on mem, right? All of the mem workloads are going to be explicitly in here. And for our co-managed devices, all right, I'm going to go into devices. I'm going to go into Windows. Remember, this is Intune and Config Manager. Config Manager doesn't manage anything else but Windows and kind of Mac OS, but we don't really talk about that too much. So we're really talking about Windows here, right? So we're going to see all of our Windows devices. You can see these bottom three devices here. They all say co-managed. Um, this is relatively new. This is another one of those. If you haven't upgraded Config Manager recently, it says something different, and I don't remember exactly what it is offhand, but I don't think it says co-managed. Um, so, you know, we're, we're, we're refining based upon customer feedback that, hey, this terminology was confusing and, and even sometimes internally we get confused by it. So we, we make adjustments there. So always keep up with the latest is another thing there. But notice I can go in here, I can go to one of my co-managed devices. There we go, just taking a second. Uh, and I can see some interesting information about this device, right? But I have these additional features up here and these are the big things, let me zoom in on those. These are the big things that Intune in general does that Config Manager doesn't do that you may want to do, right? Clearly we have some autopilot integration. 
Uh, so that's a good thing. Michael talked a lot about that, uh, you know, right before me, or actually two sessions before me. Uh, but we can do these other things like retire and wipe. Uh, we can initiate a policy sync. Uh, we can actually send a reset down or a restart down. Now at this point, because Intune is cloud-based, it doesn't matter where our devices are. So let's say in the wipe scenario, right? So someone steals our device. In general, this would probably be an insider, right? Someone who's not necessarily overly intelligent because they have to connect it back up to a network somewhere. It's not connected to a network. We can push all the signal we want out from Intune and it's never going to get there. So this would be like employee theft, insider theft, something like that. They take it home, they hook it up to their Wi-Fi, right? Maybe they got fired, whatever, right? However, we can send a wipe signal down to it. So now we can wipe all of the user's data and get rid of it. Um, so that's one definite thing there. And a lot of folks are looking for that, right? Because BitLocker may or may not be enough. And so this is just another layer of protection that adds to it. And of course, we can come into, not compliance, into device configuration here as well. And I don't have any policies that are set up because I haven't moved any sliders over. But basically, all of the policies that are available to us in Intune, we can now push down to those co-managed devices as well. Once again, there's potentially some overlap. That's why we have the sliders. So you have to carefully plan this out. What makes sense for you to push down via Intune versus what makes sense for you to push down via Config Manager? It's up to you and you need to do a little bit of analysis to figure out exactly what is and isn't there. Uh, the other thing we can do is we can set device compliance. Now there is a built-in device compliance policy and this leads into conditional access. Right? This kind of also comes back down to the identity of the device in uh, Azure Active Directory or having it there. Right? When a user logs in from a device, we want to make sure that that device is compliant with a few things. Maybe that it has a minimum antivirus version on it. Maybe that it has um, uh, a specified, um, not antivirus, but um, a version of Windows itself. Maybe we want to make sure that it's domain joined, right? This is how we can control potentially those BYOD scenarios. So if you've dealt with conditional access on iOS or Android, very similar concept. This is kind of the carrot and stick um, approach to managing our devices or really managing the access that our users have to our um, our data. So specifically, a user logs into a system, doesn't matter what system it is, and let's say I have a compliance policy actually set up here. So once I set up a compliance policy, uh, the when the user logs in, they log in through Azure AD. So this is about Azure services, things that use Azure authentication. Once they log into Azure AD, so let's say it's it's Exchange Online, right? They log into Exchange Online, they put their password and their credentials across. At that point, there are some claims that get sent across as well, and we can check that. We can say, hey, what version of operating system are you running on? Do you have antivirus? Do you have your firewall turned on? Are you domain joined, right? And that's that BYOD scenario. Do we wanna get rid of that BYOD scenario? And if none of those things are true, at that point, we can say, oh, we're not gonna send the authentic authentication token back down to you, you're not coming in, right? And so that's a way of controlling, once again, right? It's all about the user's identity at that point in time and making sure that they're on a compliant device. So if you don't have your systems co-managed, then that's a challenging scenario. Co-management leads into that and allows you to take advantage of conditional access. Another interesting point about co-management is in addition, there's some rigid signals that we can, we can set. So let me actually go into it here real quick in the compliance policies in my Azure portal. If you haven't seen this before, I can create a compliance policy, select my platform. In this case, of course, Windows is all we're worried about. We will just call this test because I'm not going to finish this. And now we have all these different settings. So some of the ones I alluded to, right? I didn't talk about BitLocker, but that's in here. These are things that we can check on that device that the user is trying to log into, minimum OS version, we have our system security, right? And this is all about the things that get registered in um, the security center in Windows, including password, encryption, firewall, antivirus, all of these things that we can check. But these are all relatively rigid checks, right? We can't really do a whole lot of customization. Like the most we can customize here is actually putting in free text for our minimum OS version. There's not much else we can do. Now, once we actually do co-management, and we'll see if I have any baselines in here. I didn't actually check. And we come in here and I don't have a baseline, but if I created a baseline, there's actually a checkbox on the baseline. So this is in Config Manager, so totally open-ended, right? Our baselines can be based on WMI. We can have registry-based baselines. And of course, we can have PowerShell, which is the ultimate piece of flexibility there. We can create a baseline now that does anything we want. 
And that compliance information now gets sent up to Intune as well and becomes part of that determination whether the device the user is accessing that Azure resource from is actually compliant. It's completely open-ended checks here. Um, and, and I said Azure resource, right? It's, that's not really the exact correct statement here. It's anything that uses Azure AD for authentication, right? So there's a ton of applications out there outside of Microsoft, the Microsoft ecosystem that actually use Azure as its source of, of authentication. Um, so it's pretty, it's, it's like I said, it's that carrot and stick approach here. Um, and basically we're not allowing the user to access something and forcing them to make sure their device is compliant joined to the domain, right? That's probably one of the more specific ones or Azure AD domain joined, right? Once you go and fully embrace the cloud story, uh, but it enables the user to, to do that at their leisure. And, and, but we're still maintaining a high level of security, right? We're not just letting them go get a compromised device, right? When we talk about the iOS and Android world, things like jailbreaking become important. It's a little bit of a different story on the Windows side, but it's conceptually exactly the same. Let's make sure that the user is coming from a secure device. Okay, let's go back real quick and let's talk about those sliders. Uh, just briefly, you guys kind of got a feel for that with the policies, right? I briefly talked about the policies in Intune uh, and it's the same thing here, right? It's, it's determining which pieces that we want to slide over. So that specifically is this device configuration. Right? And notice there's a couple of sub points under here, but until we move this over, nothing from Intune actually comes down as far as the normal configuration policies go. There are also endpoint protection and resource access policies. So those specifically refer to nodes in the config manager console, right? So if we go to assets and compliance and we go down under compliance settings and we go to company resource access, notice that the name is exactly the same resource access. So that slider is specifically about all of these settings, right? Those settings are either managed by Config Manager or Intune based upon where you have that slider out. And same with the endpoint one, the endpoint protection, right? There's a handful of nodes under here, right? Those are controlled by either Intune or Config Manager, once again, based upon exactly where that slider is. So let's see here, did I actually leave it up? Yes, I did. Uh, then we have our compliance policies. So exactly what I just showed you before this. Who actually owns this? Now, this slider is slightly different. If I move this over to Intune, it just enables compliance in Intune, but it doesn't disable compliance completely in Config Manager. It still allows you to select that checkbox on the baseline itself that says, hey, use this for Intune compliance. I don't remember the exact terminology on the checkbox, but it's something to that effect. So that's why each of these sliders is slightly different. So you definitely have to read up on them and make an intelligent just choice about where you want to move them to. Client apps, this is allowing the line of business uh, applications, which are MSI applications and MSIX applications from Intune. Um, Win32 applications, which are those that you've used the Intune packaging tool to package up, uh, as well as scripts, right? So wherever this is at, if we don't have it set over to Intune, none of that will actually come down from Intune. Now, similar to the compliance policies, setting the slider over here to Intune doesn't mean we can't deploy from Config Manager. This is one that's really doesn't have a lot of overlap, right? Um, it, it could, right? You could create, say, um, I don't know, a 7-zip application on both sides and, of course, deploy it from both sides. In that case, you've kind of consciously shot yourself in the foot, and we're not really going to prevent you from doing that because there's really no way for us to arbitrate that. We don't have an explicit way of equating a package on both sides to saying that these are overlapped. So basically, we're just giving you the ability to control, hey, do I want to use Intune or not? But in this case, right, I still may want to use Config Manager because Config Manager traditionally has been a much richer way to deploy applications. So we're not going to prevent you from using Config Manager to do that. Office, very similar. Where do you want Office apps to be deployed from and, and, and updated? Config Manager or Intune. This is definitely an or choice here. This isn't an and choice. And then finally, Windows Update. Do we want Windows Update for business in use? And that's the Intune side. Or do we want Config Manager to control those? So once again, all of these are up to you to control. Um, we're not going to force you to go one way or the other. One of the older pieces of messaging we had was that our goal was to have everyone move over here. You know, I think I think I dispelled that pretty clearly at the beginning here. That's not true. If you guys want to be over here, great, right? And it works for you. I guess that's the real important point. If you guys have moved everything over here and it doesn't work for you, go ahead and move it back. You know, 
as long as we're able to help you and get these things done, great. That's that's our end goal. Now, if you want to be over here and it's not working and you're still you're dead set on being over here, let us know, right? Let us help you figure out why it's not working. It could be by design, it could be a bug, it could be a lot of different things. But let us know. We want to be able to help you figure these kinds of things out. But at the end of the day, it's your choice about where you want these all to be at. Okay, so let's go back here. Uh, back to my slide, right? So all about client attached, that's co-management. When you think about co-management, it's all about the client. Um, if I make these slides available, there are a couple of hidden slides in here um, that talk about the management loads or the, the workloads. I think they are down here. Here we go, sorry. Sorry for the clicking around, but it has a little bit more description. And of course the documentation has a lot more description as well. Um, so this slide was all about immediate value, right? It really is pretty quick and easy for this to happen. Um, so uh, within a day, you, you'll probably get a lot of, of your systems up. And, and we've had a couple of organizations. We had one really large organization recently um, that one of my colleagues started working with. Um, and really large, just think really large. That's the only thing you need to think of. And, and he was working with them and they were talking, okay, should we do co-management? Should we not do co-management? Um, and, and so he's like, yeah, that's a good thing. Let's go ahead and do it and, and let's turn it on and pilot. Well, before you knew it, they decided to turn it on everywhere. So pretty much overnight, uh, there is some scaling that happens. So it's not like all of their devices got enrolled. Uh, so it took them a couple of weeks because they had that many number of devices for them to get enrolled, but they pretty much all enrolled overnight. Um, and, and it didn't impact anybody. So that's another common question we get on this is, hey, if I turn this on, is it gonna break things? And of course, we never say never, right? Strange things are possible. Lots of different code paths are possible. But to the best of our knowledge, and, and I've never heard of any issue either, and to the best of my technical knowledge about how all this works, this won't affect any of your clients. Right? Until you start moving those sliders over, that's the time when you're gonna start impacting what exactly is having, happening on those clients. So with, even without moving those sliders over, and that's kind of the intent of, the, of this slide here, is you're gonna have that wipe, you're gonna have that retire, you're gonna have some of the basic information about that client in the mem console. And so now you can actually see those things from the mem console. You no longer need the config manager console for these very specific client-centric things. Okay, so about half done here. So the next portion here is the tenant attached. So this is brand new for 2002. It wasn't preview, of course, before that. Uh, but this is exactly uh, similar. And this is one of the reasons I called it out, right? So co-management is attaching your clients to the cloud. Tenant attached is attaching your config manager site to the cloud. And it's really these blue dotted lines. Uh, I don't know if you guys can actually see that those are blue, but this one right here, and this one right here, it's about attaching that to the cloud. So attaching the config manager to the mem console and starting to expose config manager via Azure and the Azure portal and the mem portal really. So one of the questions, and, and I, I don't know if this is one of uh, uh, DJM's favorite questions, but he's answered it lots and lots of times that I've heard him answer it over the years, which means he's probably answered it even more than that, is when are we gonna have a web console? Uh, and his answer always was, well, it's gonna take me probably, you know, a couple hundred man years to be able to do something like that. And I think there's more valuable things to work on. Um, and, and so that answer is still true, right? They're never gonna be able to replicate the entire console. It took them a long time just to port the MMC from Config Manager 2007 to what we have today in the current admin console in 2012 and current branch. It took him a couple of years just to do that as it was. And I don't know how many developers he had on that. You know, there were probably like four or five developers on that one. It took him a long time is really the core. And it doesn't make sense for them to redesign all of that when there's a lot of other stuff that they should be tackling or they think they should be, we think we should be tackling really. But now that we have this wonderful Azure portal that has all of the constructs done that in general, most people like, that is accessible from anywhere. So that's another cool piece about it, right? We can be anywhere we want. We don't have to, you know, load a console on one of our systems. We can, you know, be maybe at an employee's desk and we can launch it in private browser. We can be in a home potentially, right? There's lots of different variables here. I think there, there's even an iOS app, probably an Android app as well. Um, I don't think the mem console is there yet, but, um, you know, the, the moral there is that, you know, it's access anywhere and we don't have to be worrying about that specifically. And so that's what the, you know, Azure portal has started opening the door and, and we realized that, hey, wow, we can take advantage of this. Now, 
Same mantra though, we're never gonna replicate the entire admin console. That's a ton of work. Um, we don't think that there's a ton of value in doing everything, right? Um, if we had to start from day zero today and that's where we were, sure, that would probably be the place to start. Uh, but it just doesn't make sense to do that today. But if we can surface certain workloads, that's the moral here. So what are important things or what are some easy things that we can initially enable? And then we'll continue to iterate on it. But what are some initial easy things we can do? So the first one was, hey, help desk scenarios. You know, help desk folks constantly need like one or two little things, right, in the console. And so most organizations are very hesitant to dish out the console to those type folks. So if we can start enabling some of those small things that we need and, and continue to iterate on that, right? This is, you know, I think iterate I've said a bunch of times, that's a huge piece here as well. We're not going to give everything at one time, right? This isn't 2007 where we worked for five years to get 2012 out the door. We want to be able to give you small bite-sized things and continue to build on that as we go along. And so that's exactly what's going on here as well. So I think I've stayed on that slide for a little bit too long here. So let me go and I'll actually start showing you some of this. So let me actually go to my console here. And I'm going to go to this one. And I think I have it here, yes. So these devices, you guys may have seen this when I pulled up my devices before. I have other devices in here besides those ones that were just co-managed, right? So I have these all up here. Notice they don't say that they're co-managed. Well, you may be able to guess from the name, but I'll show you explicitly. I click on App01 or App1 here. Um, right there. Let me zoom in over here. Notice it's a server. And that doesn't mean that I'm managing it. Remember, this is the site that is actually communicating with Azure. It's not the client itself. Basically, what I'm doing is surfacing site data in Azure so that I can see things. So I have some basic inventory here, clearly not a ton yet, right? This is V1 may be a, um, a little bit generous. This might be V.1 or so. Uh, however you want to characterize it doesn't really matter. But this was our first go at doing all of this, right? And now I can see my servers here. So me as a help desk person, I may not be managing servers or maybe just my server admin, right? Most organizations have server admins that don't go into Config Manager either, but still may need to do some help desk type things. I can do that. I can go into the mem portal. I don't have to have the full admin console, so I can do this from anywhere. And the first three things that get surfaced right off the bat, so this is what's in 2002 today, are these three client notification pieces. Right, we have our sync machine policy, our sync user policy, and our app eval cycle. Those are, once again, some of the most common things that the help desk folks do. We just want to sync that policy down. So that's in there. Great. Pretty easy. Uh, there is a hardware tab here so we can see a little bit more information on this system as well. Not a ton more. Uh, and some of this just, I think, because my uh, systems are all VMs, some of these would fill in, but not all of them are. But if I go back here, notice I can get the same things on my co-managed devices, right? These are complementary um, or, or really supplementary. I don't know, one of the two, but they're not overlapping. Um, clearly, they're both creating a record or updating the same object in our mem console, um, but their functionality is slightly different. So I have all these things that I had up here before from, um, from co-management. But if I do my ellipses, I have these three things way over here again. Hopefully you guys can see that now. Same three things. Those are those same three client notification actions. The other thing that's in here, and this is at the bottom here, right? Because this is co-managed, we can see the, the, the Intune managed workloads. As you guys saw, I don't have any of my sliders slid over, so I don't actually have anything in there. But then right above this, this is coming from tenant attach here. And I can actually see that my client is healthy. I can see the last time the client checked in. So it's one of those other common help desk things. Hey, when's the last time I've even seen this client? Why am I trying to troubleshoot this client that the site hasn't even talked to in like four months, right? Whatever, someone stuffed it in a drawer. Why am I trying to troubleshoot something that someone stuffed in a drawer, right? And, and this is gonna help them answer those kinds of questions. So that's kind of the scratching the surface of what we can do with tenant attached. Now, the cool thing about tenant attached here as well, it is part of, let me go back here in the console. It is part of co-management. Remember I said before, or you guys saw me skip over a tab in the properties for co-management, this configure upload. It is here technically part of co-management, but it is literally just this single checkbox, right? That's it. 
Now I can all or nothing once again in my environment. I decided to not do all. Actually, I did do all because I put everything in this collection, but I just wanted to test out having the collection. So I limited it to a specific collection. So maybe there's some devices you totally don't want to touch, right? Domain controllers, I don't know, exchange servers, other things that you just don't want to have that information up, right? Everyone has their own reasons. Great. We've given you the flexibility to be able to do that. Now, the one thing that does kind of come up here though is, hey, this is part of co-management, which means I'm, I'm not ready to attach my clients because maybe they're not hybrid Azure AD domain joined yet. That is a prerequisite for co-management. Maybe I'm not ready to do that yet. Well, we can still set up co-management and on the enablement page, we just set this to none, right? We do all the things that we normally would for co-management, which connects your site and allows your site to communicate with, with Intune, uh, but we just set this to none and that way we're not doing co-management yet. We set it to none, we come over here to configure upload, we turn this on, and now the site itself is simply sending data straight from the site to MEM or, and, and surfacing it through the MEM console. Pretty simple, pretty quick and easy to actually do. This one is super easy to do. You have to be a 2002, like I said, uh, but if you haven't done this one and you have Azure already, and you, you know people aren't afraid of Azure in your organization, I highly encourage you to do this one right off the bat. Now, there's not a ton of functionality in there today, Oops, I don't want the timeline. Uh, you know, like I said, it's just these three things down here, right? The, the different client notification actions. But once again, this is really just the beginning. We are going to iterate on this and, and iterate on this like crazy probably because it opens up so many cool possibilities. So that opens up, well, what are the cool possibilities? And this is gonna take me a second to log in here. This is a, a different lab. This is a TP lab um, of a colleague. So it takes a second for it to actually log in here. Um, but if you've read the what's new for the 2005 or the 2005 TP, um, this is gonna show you what some of that stuff is. So let's see, let me launch the console. If you happen to be running the 2005 TP, there is a bug where the console shuts down every hour. So that's why I didn't have it open right away. Uh, but if we go in here and we go to our devices, and this isn't going to be the end experience. The end experience is it's definitely going to be integrated in with the normal MEM console, but because of the preview and because we're doing lots of previewish type stuff, we have to get to it in a slightly special way. So I'm just going to choose one of these clients and I'm going to go to the ever confusing start menu. And, and if any of you have ever worked with anyone else and told them to go to the start menu, and of course they gravitate down here, you can feel my pain there because that happens quite often with me. Um, so let's go to the admin center preview. I clicked that really quick. Hopefully you guys saw that. I'll just do that again. Once again, this isn't the normal workflow. There will probably be something along these lines in, in the, the final workflow or you know one of the iterative workflows that are coming up. But for now, this was the easiest way to do it because we can't directly navigate to this in the mem portal. So once I clicked on that, it opened very similar to the mem portal. This is a preview portal, right? It says preview up here. If you actually look at the URL preview and has all this other preview words in there. Uh, but all these blades will eventually get integrated in. And so I clicked on this specific client here. I have no idea what this client is offhand, um, but you can see some of the basic information that we actually have in here. But now we can start seeing some other interesting things. One of the things we added in 2002 was being able to track boundary groups. We can see that here in the portal. So once again, those help desk type tasks, so that's our first pass at this. Let's surface that up here so that we don't have to have the console. Other cool things, and a lot of people are starting to wait for this. There's a new piece that we're working on. It's called Endpoint Analytics. Endpoint Analytics is explicitly about telling you things like, when did the system reboot? And you can actually see on this system here, I think one of the other systems has some more interesting information, but, and the documentation gives you all the different events that we're tracking now, but you can see this guy booted. I'll zoom in just so maybe you can read that one a little bit better. Could just be my bad eyes maybe everyone can actually read well but notice that we initiated a shutdown there so we can actually see when these events happen as well things like app crashes blue screens group policy or time time to boot right and and dividing that time to boot into group policy time or um, alternate time there's there's other times that happen during boots i think driver loads i don't remember all the details that are in there but those are all going to show up as events in here and then they're all going to show up in this timeline view up here uh, so now, once again, help desk scenario, user, whatever, right, is having issues. And of course, this is all going to be collected data. So it's not like we're going to 
be focused on just a single system. And now all of a sudden, if we see, who knows, Google Chrome, I don't know, I'll pick on them, has started crashing in our environment and we've had 5,000 crashes of Google Chrome in our 6,000 person environment in the last day. Hey, we've got an issue. We've got some type of issue. We need to go figure that out. Tracking that kind of data today, totally possible, right? Most of this stuff is just in the event log. There's no easy tool to be able to collect it or show it in this nice timeline, right? Going back to that help desk scenario, how awesome would it be you as a help desk, you know, level one, level two type person to go in here and say, oh yeah, it looks like your system blue screen this morning. Maybe that's why you're having issues. Maybe there's a driver issue. And now they can start asking these additional questions, right? This in and of itself isn't gonna answer any of the questions about what's wrong with the user system or why they're having problems, but it gives them information to continue to start asking new questions that they never even thought that they could have asked before or should have asked before, because now we know, hey, you know, you user, why are you rebooting your system every two hours, right? And the user may be like, well, there's some weird instability and I need to do that. But the user probably would have never mentioned that before. So it's all about surfacing this additional data that was never visible before. Another thing in, is showing collections. We added this on the tabs in the console a little while ago, but hey, if I want to see collections, I can see that in here now. Another thing we added, I think this came in in 1902, but wasn't fully realized until 1906, was being able to do on-demand application installs. I don't think any of these are actually enabled for it, so if I click install, it probably won't work. But this is the on-demand application install piece that we added, right? In 1902, we had to use a PowerShell script to trigger it, but in 1906, it was fully realized in the console. So now me as a help desk admin, once again, you know, I get the call from whoever, right? John, Joe, whatever happens to be his name. I go find the application that they're requesting, assuming they're approved, right? We're there's no real approval process. You know, you need to handle that through your own ticketing system and that kind of stuff. But if I want to kick it off, boom, I hit install. This goes down through client notification, right? The same thing we've been doing on the back end. It's going to take slightly longer because, of course, this is in Azure. The signal has to get sent down to your site first, then your site has to send the signal out. Uh, but we're not talking like minutes or anything here. We're talking seconds in most cases that it's going to take an additional. Here, I can and I can click install and the user's gonna have that installation while they're on the phone, right? They're not gonna have to wait for the policy refresh. They're not gonna have to wait to be dropped into a collection. They're not gonna have to wait for any of that. Basically that instant gratification that most people have in general been asking for, for, I don't know, 20 years that I've worked with SMS and Config Manager. I mean, we realized it in Config Manager and now we've surfaced it directly here in the MEM portal as well. Pretty cool. Uh, I'm gonna skip CM Pivot for a second and I'll come back to that. So scripts, right? We added PowerShell scripts a while ago. 1806 was probably when it came out of preview. Not that I ever remember anymore. But same thing, right? We can send scripts down to do whatever we want on our systems now using the run scripts feature that's in Config Manager. Well, notice here, there's only one script in this environment, but I can actually run this script. I can't say I've done that in this environment, but I'm gonna go ahead and click on it anyway, and we'll see what exactly happens. Just by the name, look, it's just grabbing uh, device architecture. I think this was just a WMI query. Uh, I noticed the script's running and we should get some feedback here in a second. I probably won't wait for too long on it. Oh, there we go, look at that. So, and and, and to, to give a little bit of context, I mean, that came back in, I don't know, how long did I talk? Maybe four seconds. I know I'm long-winded sometimes, but it still wasn't very long. That was on one device. If you played with run scripts before at all in Config Manager, you know that it's relatively parallel. It's not completely parallel because that doesn't make sense. Uh, but it is relatively parallel. We would have gotten this same result from all the systems as well. Um, and it would have come back in, in relatively the same time frame. And of course, this was me sitting in Azure, right? So I am remoted into a box and running that, but I could have, from my box here at home, logged into the Azure portal the exact same way, sent that signal to my site, wherever my site happened to be. You know, it could be across the country, it could be across the world. Uh, and then that could send the signal out to wherever the clients are, whether those clients are on-prem, this works over CMG as well, right? They could have sent that out now, all directly here from the Azure portal. I didn't have to install anything. I just had to have the right credentials uh, and the right permissions, um, which of course is why you should be using MFA as well, but that's a whole separate side topic. So the last one is CM Pivot. For those of you who haven't played around with CM Pivot, uh, CM Pivot is a way to do ad hoc queries in real time, very similar, similar to um, uh, to PowerShell scripts. Uh, they're not really open-ended like PowerShell scripts, but it's like querying entities, right, on the system. So you're kind of querying WMI in a way. It's more than WMI though, so that's that's not necessarily the best thing to say. And it sends that query out in real time, right? Very similar to what we just saw with scripts. Um, 
There we go. So, okay, this one actually gave me a time. The previous one may have given me a time as well, but in 17 seconds, I just queried the system and I got all the stuff back from the Win32 operating system class. In this case, this one does directly correspond to WMI, but not all of the entities do correspond to it. So I could run this potentially. We haven't wired all of this up yet. This is still a technical preview for these pieces, but I could run this against as many systems as I wanted to run it against, right? Anything that's managed in the config manager world is now gonna be surfaced up here and I can run this against them, right? All the coolness, all the power of CM Pivot that's always been there. Well, I wouldn't say always, we added that relatively recently as well. And now we can see all of that information. Um, this is still a work in progress, so it's you know it's kind of basic, right? We don't have our entity chooser. We don't have a lot of those things that we're used to in the normal CM pivot, uh, but we got that information back. And once again, this can be all of our systems on the internet if they're connected via CMG. It's kind of going back to that you know very first statement of, hey, we just sent all of our users home. Now what? Well, if this was wired up, no big deal, right? Initially, I don't even have to have the console installed anywhere. I just log into the Azure portal and I can start doing these kinds of things. It's not all real necessarily today, but that's where we're going with it, right? Uh, and so now even like your help desk people, right? You know, you go to SeaWorld. Uh, I had this happen uh, when I was an FTE for an organization. I went to SeaWorld um, with the family, of course. And, and when I got home, I had like 60 text messages. Uh, because the entire data center had shut down. So in a way, I was really glad I missed all those text messages, but let's pretend we're today and I actually got a text message and I had a mobile device with me capable of getting to this portal. I could have actually gone in and maybe in, and done some help, right? I could actually, you know, send these kinds of things, query things and whatever, right? You guys can come up with all kinds of crazy scenarios. I think it's pretty unbounded there. Okay, so that's cool, that's TP. Um, for those of you who haven't played with TPs, anyone can do that. They're limited to 10 clients um, and, and um, pretty cool to be able to do, so. Okay, so back to the slides. I think I talked about everything that's on this slide. Um, does not require a CMG, but clearly some of those things in there, right? If you have CMG, they get even cooler is really what it comes down to. Um, here's the, you know, the thing I pointed out even though it is on the co-management configuration piece here, you don't really have to have co-management. It literally is just this one checkbox. Uh, whether you have co, and, and if you already have co-management, it's it's you know you don't even have to go through the co-management wizard. It's just this checkbox. I had a customer do that to me this week. Actually, I had a Monday morning meeting with them, um, and he had already started doing co-management on their devices. He, I don't know, they they'd done about eight thousand or so already. Um, and, I, and I, we talked about tenant attached for you know 20 minutes or so, and he said, that's cool. I'm gonna go get approval for doing that. By the time I met with him on Wednesday again, he had it enabled and all of his devices were, were showing up in the mem console as tenant attached, including all of his servers. Um, so it was pretty cool, pretty easy to do, almost zero impact, right? And, and, and I say almost because once again, right, strange things are possible, but in their environment, they saw no impact, everything just worked. So, uh, so that's you know what it, it is in public preview today. So the other, you know, the other piece, and, and I've, I've alluded to this a bunch of times here. This is this is just the beginning. This is just the beginning of our area process on both co-management and tenant attach. Um, clearly, tenant attach I think has further to go because there's so many things we can do in the admin console, right? And all of those things are possibilities to move over to mem and for those tenant attach scenarios. Um, but even with co-management, right? Intune itself, there's a new release of Intune every single month. Uh, and there's new features within Intune every single month. So all of those things we have to account for as well because we don't want to create conflicts. Uh, and as Intune adds new things, right, there, there's going to be killer things that Intune comes up with that only make sense to run from the cloud, right, uh, that we want to be able to take advantage of on our systems without throwing out Config Manager, right, because we all love Config Manager. We all want to use Config Manager still. Uh, and so we want to have the best of both worlds. The better together story is absolutely true here. Um, but it is just the tip of the iceberg. And, and so this is another, I've said it a couple times here as well. If you're not keeping up with your config manager builds, you're really missing out. You really have to work on any leadership folks that, that have a problem with this. Uh, DJ may throw up some statistics. He does it every, at, at most of his conferences about the velocity that we have of folks that, that upgrade with no problems, right? We have telemetry around all the folks that upgrade to the latest builds, all of the issues they have, uh, we have ways of pushing out it fixes dynamically. So most folks don't realize this. You don't have to install a hot fix sometimes. Sometimes these fixes actually do come down dynamically. Those are typically around setup though, right? So if there's an issue during setup itself, um, but we see 
staggeringly low numbers of issues that happen during setup. They still happen, right? Every environment's different. When you're dealing with 100,000 different environments that have all their own variables, there's going to be a couple of issues here and there. Uh, but we respond to those really quickly. So just encourage you to stay up to date on Config Manager. Intune, kind of cool, stays up to date all by itself, right? So um, there's not much you actually have to do there. Uh, that's a kind of a blessing and a curse sometimes because all of a sudden that checkbox you were counting on being there is not there anymore. Uh, be, as your tenant got rolled out, depending upon where your tenant's at, it may be in one tenant and not another tenant. So you got to keep you got to keep track of it on the Intune side as well. Uh, but that's cool, right? We're continuing to work on both of them. We're continuing to make sure that better together story uh, is certainly there. Um, I think I talked about everything in here. So this is mainly about right, just making sure that you guys have it in the slides. Um, I think the main thing is this statement up here, right? This is never going to be intended to replace the admin console completely as far as tenant attached goes. Uh, we are surfacing some things uh, and, and we've got, we're always looking for ideas here as well, right? Uh, the help desk scenario is clearly the, the, the low hanging fruit or the one that, that's most common that, that has the most bang for the buck, but there are tons of other scenarios. And so folks have like this specific scenario that they think everyone can benefit from and we need these specific features you know, put it in the feedback, put it, you know, for those of you that don't know, I'll show it just to make sure, right? If you go up here in your config manager console and you hit the smiley face, boom, we look at this. We really seriously look at this. Uh, go put that feedback in. It goes into our devs pipeline. They, they love seeing smiley faces too. They probably don't see enough smiley faces, um, you know, just to, to see how appreciated we they are and, and what kind of cool stuff they do, so. OK, I think this is the last meaningful slide I have here, and this is also just a summary. I doubt that I talked about every little piece that's on here. Uh, what's in the green box is really what we talked about, right? Um, if you want to stay on premises, great. Like, like I said at the beginning, we're not going to force you off. You know, we want to make sure that you're getting what you need. And if you're getting what you need uh, out of what we're doing for you, great. We're happy, right? Uh, kind of same with all the way on the right there, right? If you want to do MDM, full into an MDM management on your clients, great. Right? We're happy that you're going to do that. Um, I, I will say that I think there are potentially some shortcomings. There are lots of organizations that are successfully doing this, so don't think that it's you know something that you're going to fall flat on. Uh, but there are gaps, right? Particularly with expectations, right? If you're used to Config Manager and you move to Intune, it's going to at the very least be quite different, right, for certain things. Uh, and so you may run into a few things. You know, that's totally understandable. We want to improve those kinds of things. But if you're in the middle, right, if you want Config Manager and you know that all this additional value has benefits for you, great. And that's where these two pieces come in. There's clearly kind of some overlap there. And you can see those first few checkboxes are a little bit of overlap. Uh, but they both do provide value. Both co-management and cloud or tenant attached provide tons of value for organizations. Uh, and, it, and they're really, at the end of the day, super simple to do. I think the biggest thing that's or the thing that's the most difficult to do in most organizations is to get started, particularly with that Azure AD Connect and getting your devices hybrid Azure AD to main joint. Because convincing people what it is, why it won't break everything in their environment, that, that's the first hurdle. And a lot of that's more political and logistics uh, than it is actually technical. Once you get going on to these kinds of things and it becomes second nature in your organization, it just it becomes exactly that second nature. People uh, start accepting it, people start seeing the value from it, and, and it becomes that much easier to start checking those additional checkboxes to continue to add that additional value. Uh, just some links here at the end, right? There's actually some walkthroughs. There's actually a click through walkthrough of co management. It actually shows you everything. So if you're still not convinced, um, and, and you want to see it in a little more detail that's there, right? There is a whole series, oops, uh, a whole series on co-management as well. And then there's some partner stuff there as well. And that in a nutshell is, is cloud attached and, and co-management. So hopefully you guys will all go turn that on if you haven't done it already, or you go stand up a TP site and go see the coolness to, that I kind of showed you the tip of the iceberg up there. And that's it for me. Thank you very awesome. much, everybody. And I will, uh, I'll, Go through the, the QA. I think Rob and some other folks have been going through the QA as well. And, and I put my Twitter all the way at the beginning. Sorry, let me go right back to that. Uh, definitely reach out to me on Twitter. Uh, and, and I'd love to hear feedback from, from folks having tons of issues or one issue that that's just a showstopper for you and your 